<laughs> in this 51 Vets case study, we are talking with Matt Frost, who is one of our first members and I believe one of our number one or number two chief of staff in the organization. But <laughs> Matt is a case study on how to leverage the 51 Vets network. And I hope everyone can learn from the path that he's done because it's in a, a different path than what most people do, which is around technology and startups and the sales pipeline. So Matt, I'm going to start off and just ask, like, what was the brief background on your active duty time and your kind of general transition timeline? Yeah, no, sure. Uh, so I retired from the Navy after 20 years as a SEAL, um, middle of 22. So but been about a year and a half at this point. I was a West Coast SEAL the whole time. Uh, operator through and through, did back-to-back -back team leads, which I was very proud of, and then ended my time at at SOCOM. Uh, I was the guy who was lucky enough to be hand-chosen to uh, represent the Naval Special Warfare Enterprise to to our four-star governing body command, uh, U.S. SOCOM. So uh, really good exposure, uh, definitely a different kind of bullet point for a resume than a lot of SEALs uh, have. It sort of shows that staff job, that C-suite engagement kind of thing. And, you know, if you could imagine the problems that we were solving many fiscal years down the road with a with a pretty large but uh um restricted budget so definitely a competitive space to to be in but that's where i finished up in tampa and then i eventually retired moved to dallas texas and somewhere along the way you're right i was i don't know what number of 51 veterans i was i was probably not the first chief of staff you had but i was probably the first one with the title who was designated to be the chief the of staff first one who got it right yeah we'll say that we'll say that i think <laughs> I think the next couple have been dramatic improvements across the board, but I'm happy to to, to, to lay the foundation. Um, I think as 51 vets grew, but uh, that's that's how I got there. I got in through uh, another SEAL who was already in the network. That's awesome. And then, what has 51 vets meant to you? What have you gotten from 51 vets? I mean, organizations like 51 Vets, I think, are absolutely critical. So for guys like me who've had their head down in the DOD sand for, for 20 years, I got out having zero network, zero civilian network. I didn't even have LinkedIn. Um, so uh, I, I got LinkedIn, uh, help with resume, a lot of introductions, because that first part of, I think, any retirement transition journey is, 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 is crossing a lot of things off the list and find out what you actually want to do. And this is where I think 51 Vets is, is unique in, in the sense of we're not looking to get guys jobs for the sake of guys having jobs because we have a bit of a deeper, um, I think, obligation, right? These are guys who are very purposeful, who want to sit at the table, who just need that translation of that skill set, who have been there, done that, served in those key leadership capacities with real, often very high level executive experience, um, touching a lot of different pots. So to have that type of chameleon um, character in, in, in 51 vets, these guys are really good kind of across the board. If you need a hard fill for a chief of staff or a COO, they can help things get off the ground. Uh, you have a very robust entrepreneurial path. Like you said earlier, it's a lot of finance, a lot of venture capital, a lot of private equity. Um, but that's what the 51 vets attracted me, right? They were looking for me to have a seat at the table and I'll, I'll go into it in a minute on the first job they got me, but they were not looking for me to have a job. They're looking for me to have a, a career with huge upside, a lot of growth potential. Um, and, and that's the big difference, I think. And I haven't seen another organization that, that does that really well. What are the opportunities that you got from 51 Vets? I mean, the immediate opportunity is 51 Vets has a shockingly large network, even though it's financially based. Um, all the private equity firms and the venture capital firms have portfolios that are incredibly vast. And then you yourself with, with your side of the house do a really good job of, of, of marketing, networking, and, and, and making introductions and cracking doors open for, for, for guys like me. I can remember even when I was just the chief of staff, no one quite knew what to do with me because I wasn't a venture capitalist and I wasn't a hedge fund guy. And I, I, was, I was thinking, of, in my mind, I thought I was taking away a spot on, on your sheet. For a guy who did fit your mold a bit better. But you, uh, again, like I said earlier, saw the value. We have a lot of transferable skill sets, kept me in the club um, and made a few introductions, uh, which I'll get to in a second. But one of the first things you did was just organize a Zoom call kind of like this, where I gave probably a 30 to 40 minute spiel on leadership, 
high performance teams, high tempo environments and, and culture sustainment. Really just to kind of A, get the brand of people that you have under the tent at 51 bets out there, but also just to see what that spark. And you filled that Zoom room with probably 10 to 15 um, different private equity uh, partners. and partners. <laughs> yeah, I mean, high, high level people who are like, okay, this guy's a ton of use. And I won't mention any of their names right now, but, but four or five of those people became mentors of mine and still check up on me and have helped me with future introductions and future strategy, future growth, uh, next career moves, things like that. So that has been massively, massively like just the venue to kind of showcase that, hey, these are high-end vets who can do a lot more than what you think a traditional veteran can do. Yeah, we were talking about what makes us unique uh, during our board meeting in Boston where we're at today. And it's like, number one, the unique community where we're pulling our members from. And it is not a y'all come. It is a very tightly defined uh, cohort of veterans. Then number two, the industries that we're placing people in is pretty well defined. And then number three, uh, the education that a lot of our members have, like more than 50% mm -hmm. either have an MBA, are getting one, um, or are in the middle of it. And so the the, the quality overall on both sides of the table from the veteran members and the professionals is just the highest quality. And we're not connecting you with an associate level. You're getting connected with the managing directors, the partners, the CEOs, the founders. And that's the secret sauce to what makes 51 Vets unique is knowing our members and making the direct fast connections as opposed to let's talk about interviewing. Let's talk about resumes. And then six months later, something happened. It's like maybe six minutes versus six months. <laughs> yeah, the, the timeline is shockingly fast. And you're right. That's because you make introductions to kind of needle movers, right? These are people who are hyper aware of their industries and their sectors, and they know the needs and the gaps they need filled. And if you strike the right chord, it, it can happen really, really quickly because like you said, uh, everyone who gets through these doors to 51 bets is a obviously they're highly accomplished and highly motivated but these are self-starters right uh they're coming to you with polished resumes they're they're coming to you with seasoned educational experience to round out a veteran career so they're not a one trick pony i did this this and this here's the translation of that on why it matters in, in your realm and your world uh i always use the same analogy you know uh, people change, products change, problems don't change, right? Um, but then you add in the civilian education that these guys take really seriously, some some pretty high level universities, um, and it, it goes from there, right? So these are instantly marketable people who are already hit the ground running. Any organization that that you plug them into, and I'm sort of living proof of that because I went off the beaten path. I'm sort of the the black sheep of the group who who went uh, into tech sales um, as as opposed to you know right down yeah. the well, let's dive into that because your path was, I mean, how do we introduce you to Pavilion? Like, where does your path yeah. start into tech sales? I forget the exact order of events. My path into tech sales started where um, I, I crossed a ton of things off my list and I hadn't really found something that I cared about yet. And in full disclosure, where when you intervened, I was probably halfway down the, the Amazon rabbit hole. I was aware that um, eventually I would hate it, but I figured by the time I hated it and I was ready to quit, I'd have the Amazon stink on me and I'd be, you know, taken more seriously out there in the real world. Right. Um, but uh, through all those connections you made, you made one that was obviously critical to, um, I, I won't use names, but a very important person in, in the pavilion network, um, which oh, is we can. He's one of our okay. advisory board members. Sam Jacobs is the yeah. founder uh, of Pavilion, and Correct. he is on our advisory board. Um, in fact, he was there at our meeting yesterday for over four hours, and yeah. he's been an incredible <laughs> contributor. Okay, well then, if we can name drop, uh, it was absolutely Sam Jacobs. So again, another example of you going right to the top. You didn't funnel me into some sort of member administrator. Hey, think about adding Matt to the Pavilion network. You went to the owner founder of Pavilion and said, I have a guy who is hyper capable, hasn't found anything what he wants yet, uh, thinks he wants something small because what he cares about most is, is being impactful. And 
uh, you and I created kind of a blurb um, and we sent the resume um, to him and that got posted and not a, not a joke. Less than 24 hours later, I had five or six messages waiting for me um, from, from companies that were in that pavilion network. And then to get in that pavilion network, it, these aren't, you know, um, these aren't, these, these companies aren't exactly fugazi, right? These are real companies who are ready to grow and scale and actually have a demand signal of the need. So one of the ones, and again, I won't mention any of the company's names, but uh, it, was, it was a revenue operations company. So imagine uh, a firm, uh, it was all bootstrapped by the founder, but they'd be pretty close to between series A and series B as far as size and scale. When they found me, they had a small fire. They needed to pour gas on it. Um, they sold essentially human capital geniuses, right? The people who can really do really well in manipulating those CRM systems, Salesforce, HubSpot, help you define your go-to-market motions, your sales processes, the customer journey definition, all, all that kind of stuff and tie it all together with tech, right? Um, they had a, a guy who was doing both, um, who was essentially the head of sales and their uh, chief revenue officer. He very much wanted to divest of the sales hat and be solely responsible for CRO stuff. Um, and again, because you weren't looking to have me become an account executive, you were looking to have me become the VP of sales somewhere that I cared about so I could be impactful and, and have that contributing mentality, which is what I think a lot of us want, we want that sense of purpose that, that we're helping, you know, um, move the ball down the field on our end. Right. I don't want to be a cog in a machine. I, I want to be helping drive the bus here. So, uh, uh, I became their VP of sales. I shadowed this guy for probably three to four months. And then once he was confident with me, uh, I took over the sales team When I took over the, the sales. He was gracious enough to teach me everything he knew at that point, And then also gracious enough to have the confidence in me to let me put my own spin on how I wanted to change things uh, for, for what I thought was the better. Um, and then it, it ended up being honestly a great marriage. I stayed there for probably about a year and a half, to be honest, um, before I got another job uh, again with the help of 51 uh, veterans as I kind of moved up the food chain um, a, a bit higher. But that was the connection, you and uh, Sam Jacobs and Pavilion. And it happened really, really quickly. Within 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 one week, that founder flew out to Tampa as I was trying to meet me and then made me an offer on the spot. And then a week later, after I'd talked to the wife, uh, we said yes. For new 51 Vets members, what is your advice to them on how to make the most of the organization? I mean, the best thing about it is all the members, uh, the ones who are already successfully transitioned and the ones who are going through transition are all really responsive. And that's sort of the accountability piece. If you put a Slack message out saying, I need help on X, Y, and Z, you'll have 10 responses within an hour. I, I would wager to make that bet there. Uh, so if for some reason you're not finding what you need on one of your pathways, it, it could be a conversation with one of the members as well. I came across this. This is a great fit. People are always sort of feeding top down as well. Um, the best thing you can do is just heavy involvement, right? I went to every fireside chat you had just to hear people out. Again, it was that exploratory process to save space, to ask a bunch of stupid questions, um, and then kind of really drill down on like, what's your day-to-day -day like? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? What's the upside potential for this? If I were to think about um, um, hitching my wagon to yours kind of a thing. So um, that the network is, is really the best. If you take any, I took every introductory call you sent my way, um, I think is, is what it was. But uh, yeah, if you're a new member, get in under the tent as fast as you can, introduce yourself, hit every every career path that we offer start crossing things off the list. And then once you have an idea or a target of what you want, that's where you and, and the network and the board members are really, really helpful. We have Matt Frost. He wants this, he wants it here. This is the, the level he's looking for. Now we have sort of a focus and, and, and that's where you can make real introductions that actually matter uh, and, and get things moving. And I think the other takeaway is you have to tell people what you want and mm -hmm. do it consistently even if it's only 50% correct and you think you might change industry, you just have to put yourself out there because the staff, uh, other members and industry advisors can help you iterate on what that in-state looks like. And if you don't 
put yourself out on Slack and, and be known, then you can't make the most of the network. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think you also have to participate in the different pathways, whether it is banking, yeah. private equity, uh, startups, tech, VC, um, as opposed to being reactive, you need to be proactive, reach out to the staff and say, hey, I'm moving to Boston. I don't know anybody, but I think I'm interested in tech sales. Can I have some help? Or I have no clue what I need and I actually need some more active guidance. Fantastic. Let's jump on a call. Let's narrow it down. I'm going to pass you on the next person. You're going to narrow it down further. And after 30 of those calls, you're going to have some opportunities. <laughs> yeah. And, and and also the other side of that coin is everybody you bring in on the professional side is massively motivated to help us. And they're absolutely looking for us to make an ask. Here is who I am and here's what I want. They, they want that ask, right? They don't want this to be a meet and greet. They're not looking for an intro to, to a vet so they can feel good about themselves or to say, Hey, I'll pass you on to so-and-so they're looking to help you right now today. If you have a defined ask and and that's what matters most. Those people are are ready to, um, uh, I said it before, but they're ready to move the needle for you immediately. I have X, Y, and Z let's talk. Exactly. Um, what are maybe some key lessons from your transition broadly, maybe some mistakes that you made that you wish others can learn from? Um, I mean, I made bunches, bunches of mistakes, um, along the way I'm struggling to think of the the big ones now, because it, my, my mistakes were really just hesitation up, up front, right? Once I realized I wanted to be in a smaller startup space, which I still am today, that's where I should have driven the focus, um, immediately as opposed to just kind of still on that. I was in the exploratory phase for way too long is, is, is a better way to say it. I think if it doesn't resonate right away, it's sort of like taking the SATs in high school, right? Your first instinct is probably the right answer. So I could have been more aggressive at crossing things off the list. Um, and that would have made this path faster and it's everybody's own timeline, right? I mean, my, my, everyone's timeline is you want to have another job lined up, um, prior to departure from the military, right? So there's not this frantic search at the at the end right um that was probably the biggest one i made um the other ones like you said i did a bad job in the beginning of of making that ask right i i I didn't understand the process that you'd created and i i was not aggressive enough in saying here's what i want out of this conversation here's here's my ask here's a very specific uh timeline and and role that i'm looking for because in in my mind I didn't want to burden them with going to find it um, only to come find out later a month or two in. Nope. That's what they're here for. They're here for you to make that ask. So I, uh, I did a bad job of being uh, direct initially is is what I would say. Um, But yeah, I I I think we need to double tap on that. Like with your industry professionals that you're being connected to have a specific ask and every time you're talking to one of your industry professionals at the end of that, ask them, hey, do you know anybody in Boston that you could connect me to? Do you know anybody else at a different tech firm that I could just ask them? Have a specific ask. It's okay if it's 50% directionally correct. You're going to refine that, but give them something specific on a timeline. Be like, hey, this week, would you mind doing one intro? And they're going to say yes. Yeah. If not, guess what? They're not in our network or we weed them out on the industry professional side. Um, but True. that is key. Like, don't be afraid to ask something very specific and, uh, and your, your, your network and your resources are going to expand exponentially. Yeah. And I sort of had to wait for on those zoom calls to watch others make that direct, direct ask. And then you're, you hang up the call. You're like, well, I think I missed a window there. I wish I would have said that. Now that guy has. That was that a partner question. of a billion dollar firm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy God, that guy can quit working again. Uh, good for him because uh, he was he was he was more direct than I was. So uh, inside track and and well earned by by him. But uh, those those are the biggest mistakes I made. And and again, not not overly mistakes, but they cost me time, right? And 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 I could have done more, but everything worked out in in the end. Be because the network does work, right? There's not that it's small enough that you can cater down to the person. You can send up a a panic signal saying, Hey, I've only got six weeks left. And you immediately kind of jump to the front of the train and you get all the resources. Um, but there is that ownership on you. 
figure out what you want because otherwise it's just a network. If you can't point the network to a target, it's just general exploration and it, it's never really going to be overly effective. At that point, you have to get lucky, stumble upon Nobody something. Nobody is going to hold your hand through this unless you're at that phase, like I need help right now in 30 days because mm -hmm. this is a unique situation. But the vast majority of the situations are you have to make the most of the network and you have to be proactive about reaching out to people in the different channels and with our members and with our uh, industry advisors. So if you had to kind of summarize, maybe in a few words, maybe one word or a few words, mm -hmm. what 51 Vets is, what, what would that be? Um, 51 Vets is, 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 is purposeful career employment for highly capable individuals. Um, that, that really is, I think, the the best way to say it um these the people that you select and the, the pros that you match them with are absolutely looking to put people in critical roles that are needed right now because there are expectations and and on the line with financial gain and and and, and in a results driven or in a, in a results driven arena right this is a person who will accomplish whatever goal they set out for them regardless of circumstances so um yeah it's it's purposeful employment um, for the vets in, in a career that I think that they like, you know, because, um, I tell everybody who gets out, you can't fall into that trap. Uh, like, so I'm, I'll never recreate a seal platoon. I'll, I'll never be able to recreate that. Uh, the goal is to get as close as you can to that, I think. And a lot of these companies offer those same types of stakes, those same types of high tempo, really, really good culture, high performance teams. These are, these are people who are, are looking to win and win now and, and those are the kind of tribes that we're trying to find, right? So it's that like-like marriage of um, these are these are the right type of people to introduce us to. That was way more than two months. <laughs> well, thank you for being one of the earliest members and the earliest chief of staffs and for uh, getting jobs on <laughs> the network and continuing to, to give back. It, it is awesome to see just the full life cycle of, your interaction with 51 vets and i hope we get more people going down the tech track like you have because i think it's a very interesting route um and if people are interested in reaching out what's the best way to on slack or linkedin or what's the best yeah uh both i obviously check 51 vet slack uh, as often as i can try to be uh, as active participatory and, and there's been a few conversations that i've had there for guys who are thinking about it um, I don't know how many, how many people have, have gone, um, kind of the, the road less traveled, I guess, is, is what I've done. Um, but it's, it's interesting. It's fun. You get into these startups, there, there's everything all the way down to equity on the table. Right. So, uh, it's, it's, uh, I've had a lot of fun doing it. Um, and, and I like the atmosphere, but no Slack is best LinkedIn second, somewhere in there is my email, but yeah, happy to connect. <laughs> all right. All right, man. This is awesome. Congrats and all the success. And if anyone has any questions about 51 Vets, please feel free to reach out. You can go to us at 51vets.org. And if you want to apply, we have our application instructions on there. But until next time, this is 51 Vets case study with Matt Frost. All right, <laughs> talk to you later. Good to see you. See you, buddy. Bye.